H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. About implicit objects. Implicit objects are basically which supports JSP implementation with respect to an object creation. You don't want to create that. Okay, you don't want to get a get method or post method and then take the parameters out of it. Nothing like that. You have those parameters right available for you and you can use it anywhere. Okay, everywhere. Now out of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an introduction to page context. So page context is something which we have learned about. We are not, we heard the definition, but we have not done any coding on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So what page context is used for? So first thing I'm going to do is I will add attributes in request session and application. Okay, and then I'll change that code to use page context for setting the scope. It is also possible. Correct. So now first thing is you know how to do that how to actually add attributes into uh, this stuff right so in here what I'm going to do is I just say request and you know the drill you request that set attribute and it will give you set attribute right and you can add an attribute so let me do that so it will be uh, JSP request ATTR Okay, and then I also put the value. Let's say something like request uh, attribute value. Here you go. And you can, I'm going to copy that stuff for others. So let's do that. It's a quick thing. So what you can do, you can just say session. Okay, and context is called as application. Please remember this. This is very important. People get confused there. Application, okay, so not uh, context. Good with that. So here I will just say it's a request session attribute. Okay, and then you have request application attributes. Application, good with that. So session attribute value and as a context attribute only so that you will get to know fine so now this is a normal way of creating things okay we have one more thing here which is called as page dot okay but page do not see any state attribute method okay but i told you that you can keep something in there then how do i do that so for that you can use page context dot and here you have something called as state attribute method now here it takes now set attribute is fine so when you set an attribute and do not pass anything okay by default repeat i repeat this by default you will see the attribute in page it's not in request it's not in session it's not in application when page context that set attribute is used the context attribute is set sorry the attribute is set in page okay but what if you explicitly want to say that so here it is called as page so jsp page attr and then i have uh, value page con uh, attribute value okay then how do i mention that that this particular thing is a page attribute so i can explicitly say that okay this is page context dot and then you can add this is in page scope okay rather i can use this mechanism to set all the scopes i do not have to use request dot session dot application dot i can specify page context dot for all of them and do what and do what do actually specify that okay this attribute is not for page this is for request and I'll do that with the help of page context dot and then scope variable so which scope I'm talking about so this is in request scope okay this one is in session scope correct and this one is in application scope correct so this is how you can specify so page context is an object which will be helping you to set the attribute in all four scopes okay 
especially paid scopes so paid scopes anyway page do not have access to set and get attributes directly so you need page context to do that so page context set attribute you have jsp space uh, attribute and you can get it back good with that any questions up to this point all good all fine okay so now moving ahead now what up to this point whatever we learned right this is not the way jsps are actually coded okay this is a basics like what are the different objects available what are the things available but then how do we actually code the stuff how do we actually write the stuff in jsp correct we need that kind of information so how do we manage that so in jsp they found out right if you, write, if you start writing java and html together it's kind of getting dirty somewhere that where exactly these two things are colliding or there exactly we need to merge them together so it's it's practically impossible to have a very clean tiny or very clean tidy uh, html uh, which is having java coordinates very hard so what they came up with is they have created some libraries which are helpful and which are, which will look like a html itself so that you can manage these java objects better and these is these are called as these are called as JSTL that is JSP standard tag library JSP al already has his own long form but then we have JSTL which is saying JSTL basically JST JSP standard tag library JSTL is not default JSP you need to include JSTL in your project so you need that jar where do you get the jar from so you can again go to maven remember this very important maven and just say maven jstl dependency or api whatever it's totally okay okay so now you need to download that particular jar file and get the latest version whatever it is so it's 1.2 or revision of 1.2 so it's 1.2 that is the just see the when exactly it's released so nobody is updating that but that's okay we don't care about that so jstl here and then go ahead and download okay jar files 29 kb hardly anything just click on it it will be downloaded for you okay keep show in folder and what you want to do is just include this particular jar file in your project and you will be able to use jstl and now we're gonna learn jstl and understand how jsps are useful good with that so show in folder and now copy that full thing and then put it in your web.xml sorry web inf lib not web.xml web inf lib so lib and paste it here good with that so now jstl api will give you an amazing api to code and use a lot of functions but how do we use it so you use that with the help of it's okay yeah so java server pages standard library is, is a collection of useful jsp tags which are encapsulating core functionality common to many jsp applications so what are the common functionality like score functionality getting retrieving setting values changing some formats okay so this is core tags then you have formatting tags okay we format the date format the numbers okay format percentage format your currency all those things formatting stuff could be that then sql tags how, how do we connect to the database page the data xml tags okay how do you understand xml page the data in the xml and put it there okay and jstl functions understanding strings so i want to break the string in between okay replace some words replant variables find out a word find out a variable all those things okay so these are standard tag libraries so now we're gonna learn the third directive called as tag lib so tag lib is a third directive which is for mentioning your tag library okay so these tag libraries are defined in such a way that you define a tag, tag lib directive and after tag lib directive you have to provide a uri this uri is very similar to your import statement so basically you are importing that particular tag library in jsp so when you import this particular tag library how do we use it so if you want to use any function from here you will use a prefix like an object which is called c so anything which starts from c colon 
or C dot. Okay, we'll see that C colon like this. This is actually coming from core tag library. Good with that. So whatever prefixes given here are just recommendations. You can put your name there. There is no problem with that. But then it's not a recommended way. So recommended prefixes are already given here. Okay, so but so that anybody, any layperson, any Java developer see this in he knows that C that means core tag, FMT means formatting SQL, means SQL, X means XML, and FFN means function. So these are already known facts to the developer. So try not to change it, but if you still want to, you can. There, there is no issue with that. Okay. So prefixes are nothing but an object, uh, kind of an instance. Okay. For, and out of that, we're gonna do what? Call the functions on this particular tag library. Now, go ahead and include this tag library. So for that, I'm going to create a core tag library JSP. Okay. So we need to understand all these things. So let me put. Uh, a standard JSP is here, which I already coded. It's already there. Okay, and then we'll try to understand it. Okay, just to save some time. Yeah, I muted. You can see that. Oh. Just grabbing some files and okay. So, what is the difference between URI and URL? They are same. Okay. Generally, we call it URI in a developer's language. And URI consists of IP address and port. Okay. Um, I'll tell you the internal um, changes is when you say URL is Amazon.com. That is a URL. But when you URI that actually consists of like which exact uh, server and which exact port and what exact application name is. If I have this elaborated developer kind of name, we call it as URI. Okay. But uh, I'll say uh, this is this is something which is internal to developers language. URI and URL is same. I'm missing my project. Ah, oh, where did I lose it? Okay, in just a minute. I lost that project. <laughs> 